NFTs blew up in value and popularity last year. And so when they blew up, all of a sudden you have some NFTs like CryptoPunks and Board Ape Yacht Club being worth $100,000 or more. And so when things become assets like that very quickly, there is the need for people to, or the desire to want to use them as financial tools. Uh, because, you know, if you got something that is as valuable as a house, it would be nice to be able to take out a mortgage on that house or to, you know, borrow against the house so that you can access some liquidity when you need liquidity. Um, and so that's that's what liquid NFTs is. It's it's a place where you can, you know, take your valuable NFTs and lock them up to borrow against them. And you can get either Ethereum or USDC as, you know, loans. Um, but at, but in order to give someone a loan, especially when we're talking about a decentralized protocol like Liquid NFTs, you need to be you need to understand what the value of those NFTs are, and uh, what most other protocols do. In fact, every single one besides us is they'll value the whole entire NFT set at the floor value for the NFTs. So for instance, you know, the, if the bo board apes right now, they're, the floor price is about 75 Ethereum. So even though there's some board apes worth like 800 Ethereum to 1,000 Ethereum plus, they'll, they'll value every single one at 75 because they know that they're transacting at 75 and that's the lowest listed price. That's what makes the floor price. So they know that it's at least worth 75 Ethereum today. Um, so Liquid NFT is one of the distinguishing features is that we offer more if you have a rare NFT. So for instance, um, NFTs like this one, this is the, this is the trippy fur traits. Um, we offer more. We actually value this at 143 uh, Ethereum if you have a trippy fur. Now, we go by the trait floor. So, I, so we're going to go into the documentations here in a second. But I want to show you that, um, you know, even though we're offering a higher than floor price, um, for these rare traits, we go by the floor price for that rare trait. So for instance, this is the last one that sold just a week or two ago, the last trippy for ape that sold, but look at it. It's also got another rare trait, the King's crown. And you know, it's just super clean, super nice looking. You can obviously see why somebody would pay 777 Ethereum for this. This is probably worth today liquid value, at least 500 Ethereum, if not 700 Ethereum. But if you were to come onto our platform, you're still only going to get a 143 Ethereum valuation because that is the lowest somebody might pay for any trippy fur. Now, in reality, you could pro any trippy fur will probably transact at you know 200 to 300 Ethereum, even if it's a not so nice looking one, at least compared to this one. Um, however, since the floor price right now is 75 Ethereum, being able to take out a loan double what you can on any other platform, well, actually more than double, but I'll explain that more later, um, is, is, is good. You're still getting a lot more than floor price, but we gotta be on the safe side for obvious reasons. We gotta protect the lender. So our valuations oracle, how does it work? It's this, this is really important to understand um, because um, you, know, you, you, need to know, you need to know how protocols work, not just you know, accept them at face value. So having this oracle is really important because nobody else has an oracle like ours that does the uh, you know higher valuations for traits. I'm sure there will be more coming. Maybe there's even one I don't know about. That's that's perfectly okay. Um, so our process starts by using NFT data anal analytic service as a baseline. So here's one of those services, NFT Bank. They will they will crunch all the data, um, you know, offers on OpenSea. Uh, and other platforms, sales, they'll crunch all that data and they will try to predict what the price is today. And they do a pretty good job, except the problem is when you've got rare ones, that, only, that there's only one of those in the entire NFT set, um, it, there's, there might not be enough data. Like maybe it never sold. Uh, someone just minted it and held it. Or maybe it did sell way back in the bear market and you only have one sale and it was too high. So I just want to show you that um, this one, for instance. So 
let's first look at bubblegum. So bubble, if you know doodles, you know that bubblegum, this is a true one of one. There's no other doodles that has got like this, you know, completely pink bubblegum traits. Um, so this is a true one of one. And 73 Ethereum, I think that's a pretty decent valuation. I think this could definitely trade for 70 to 80 Ethereum, you know, immediately uh, today liquid value. Now let's look at Grayspace. And so if you if you were somebody who were in the Doodles community and you knew, you'd be like, hmm, 263 Ethereum? That's a bit crazy. I think that's way overvalued. And the reason is because there's 11 aliens, or uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah, there's, there's about a dozen aliens. I believe it's 11 in, in the Doodle set. Um, and so, yes, even though this is a one of one there's only one gray alien. Well, there's a purple alien. There's a green one. There's a pink one. There's a holographic one. So there's more. So it's not a true one of one And there's nothing like super special about this. So treating this as a one of one that's even worth more than the true one of one is a bit crazy. And, um, and so our protocol would be at risk if we just went to buy NFT bank evaluations, because you know whoever had this rare one, if they found our platform, they might be able to take out a loan and then just be like, see ya, um, and never pay that loan back. And we might not be able to sell it for, for the value. Um, so, so we use it as a baseline. It's a pretty good baseline. Now I will say that NFT bank is great. You know, the closer you get to the floor price, it's great. It's like I say within 50, 60%, of the floor price, there's more transactions, there's more data. So a data analytics company like this one would do very well predicting the price um, as it gets closer to floor. But as it gets away from the floor, and especially to one of ones, a little bit crazy in, in the valuation. So we cross check it with over the counter swapping services. So this would be like pseudo swap, for instance. And so um, a lot of the rare NFTs, they will transact on Pseudoswap because there's no royalties on Pseudoswap. Whereas you might have to pay five to 10 ETH in royalties if you're on OpenSea um, because they do charge royalties and the royalties go back to the creators. So this over-the-counter swapping services, they will have on-chain data. And so um, there's a lot of good information there. You know, if this one hasn't transacted um, on OpenSea, it might have transacted on Pseudoswap, and there's a lot of great uh, info to be had there. But even that isn't enough, because what if it didn't transact? What if it was just minted and held? Um, so this is still not enough data, and you guys gotta understand that in an NFT set that only has 10,000 and only has a few rares, there just simply isn't going to be enough data. So it's literally impossible to create a fully automated you know, only data using um, Oracle that just, that just uh, you know, is based off of, you know, sales. That's, that won't work. So what we do is we take those two points, first the, you know, the analytics service, and then the over-the-counter swapping services, and we pull that together. And then as a final pass, we have three of our experts on our team who are experts in, you know, NFT valuations, we have them hand check every single trait. So for instance, when we came across this trait, we knew something was on, uh, out of line and we have this marked way, way lower. So you might be saying, ah, oh, well, it isn't decentralized if there's a human element. Well, hang on for a second because it, it, it is still decentralized and I'll explain why. So first of all, before we explain why it's decentralized, the human element is only to lower the prices. So first of all, we're using real data as a baseline, and then we're using you know common sense and you know what what we know. Because if you went to anybody in the Doodles community, if you were in the Doodles Discord every single day, if you owned some Doodles, if you you know talk to anybody at all, you would know that this isn't worth 263 Ethereum. You uh, you would just know. And there's it's kind of hard for an an algorithm to know that, um, but it's a lot easier for a human to know that. So first of all, what I'm trying to say is we're only using the human factor to, to lower the valuations, um, is, is almost never to raise an evaluation from, from the data. Um, 
Next, um, there is a time lock. So, so first of all, let, uh, let me explain how this is decentralized. If you go to our instant pools, uh, you can go to our instant pools and you can see the collections and then you can go and see and show the pricing data. Um, these, these, these prices, you know, these prices right here, these valuations, they're hard coded into the contract. So even though it took a human to input them in the first place, they, they, they cannot be changed in the contract. Um, meaning that uh, it, it, it actually is decentralized because you know, it, it's immutable, it can't be changed. Now, when the pricing does change, because floor prices does change all the time, so obviously the Oracle would need to adjust with that too. So when it does need to be adjusted and changed, what happens is we will hard code it again, and then we will introduce a new hash. So we will introduce a new Merkle tree roots. And that Merkle tree roots will be here that you can view. This little green check will turn orange, which means that you know requires some review, and then everybody in the community can come and check what the new pricing is. And there's a three day window where it doesn't take effect until that has happened. So this is called a, um, a you know, time locked contract. And so any change that's introduced to the Oracle, it takes three days to come to effect. And so that way, um, you know, if there is a problem, if there's something malicious or if there's a mistake, then people will be able to spot it and you, and you can either tell the team and we can correct it in that three day window, initiate another one to override it and then we start another three days. Or if there's something malicious that, uh, or if you just don't agree with the pricing, then you can take your money or take your NFT out of the pool. It's as, it's as simple as that. So um, having these time lock contracts is, is, uh, is something that's a lot of people use when there's a need for, uh, you know, human updating or any updating whatsoever, um, because it protects the users. It's still decentralized, but it requires, you know, maintenance from the users um, to to ensure that any changes that are taking place are not uh, are not uh, malicious or are not mistakes. Um, so I'm very proud of this system. I think it is it is spot on, and I, uh, you know, am backing this this oracle like with with my own money. Um, we will close the loop entirely on you know any risk whatsoever by offering insurance to to users. So um, on our platform, the only risk is with the lenders because you know if you're a borrower, you you got the money. All you got to do is pay it back. Um, you're not at risk of liquid liquidations as long as you you know service your loan pay the interest on your loan and pay the principal back when you need to um, but the risk is on the lenders and it isn't it isn't high risk at all this I would consider this a very safe platform our um, our our defaults and liquidations process it is rock solid and that keeps the lenders safe um, however the, you know the the risk is with the lenders and so we can close that loop entirely, eliminating the risk by offering lenders insurance. And so what we need to do is we need to get one of the insurance companies to go through our process and, uh, and you know, be one of those people who are, who are checking these. And, uh, and that will give them an idea of, okay, we can offer insurance for this. Here's how much insurance is gonna cost for the lenders. Um, so this is all very cool and it's amazing that we're able to keep it decentralized. Now, now one thing, um, one thing this allows us to do because we're running oracles, but like we know, we know what the values of these rare traits are, and we know what what the rare traits are. So it's really cool uh, because we can actually create these tier lists, like this one that we made for the Board API Club. Um, tier lists are cool for for users like you to uh, learn because understanding what the rare values are, what the rare traits are, and the order of the rare traits, understanding that gold fur is actually higher than other rare traits such as blue beams and the black suit and trippy fur. Um, if you understand the order of the tier list, you'll be able to tell 
you know, be, uh, when things are, are mispriced on, on OpenSea, for instance, or whether you're getting a deal or not. Uh, so this is super cool. And also, if you're new to NFTs, like maybe you know about Board Ape Yacht Club pricing uh, for rare traits, but you don't really know much about Doodles or don't really know much about Azuki or CloneX. Um, well, you can learn really quickly by just checking out, hey, what are the rare traits? Because, you know, you go answer this for one minute and you're going and you're going to have a pretty good understanding of, you know, what the rare traits are in uh, Board Ape Yacht Club. Um, so if you come onto our Discord, you can see in this pricing oracle section, you got to scroll down to the pricing or oracle section. First, how it works. We kind of went through that. Um, but if you go to each one, we have, you know, we have a... a uh, tier list and and a write up of you know th this will really help you understand the tier list and the, and the and the pricing evaluation. So if you have an interest in uh, in learning the tier list for all the different blue chips, um, then you can just come here. And so we want to educate uh, the community as well because we think that's super important to you know helping the space evolve and get where it needs to be. Um, so that's our pricing oracle and how it works. I think this will be a service that other protocols will use and trust. And, um, you know, the more people that use it and the more people that are double checking on it and, uh, you know, confirming it from every single community, then the stronger it is, too, because we have we got it. We, w w you know, our data will be backed up by the entire communities who who are also confirming that, yes, that is the liquid value. Um, so thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed as well. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end and I will see you in the next video.